Happy New Year to all of you and welcome to a new year and I hope it will be a great year for you all. Today's topic is C++. In particular I will give you an introduction to this topic starting from our C knowledge and from the knowledge about object orientation. So here you find the learning objectives. Again, check them after the session. So first I will give you a quick overview of C++. Then I will show you the new basic language constructs, so syntax and semantics, which is primarily a list. And then we go into some details, particularly focused on object-oriented programming of classes. So lastly, we'll, we'll look at the first basic example of object orientation in C++. And uh, do not worry, during the course, the next few couple of weeks, we will learn all those basic constructs that I will be introducing today quickly um, in detail, such that you can fully comprehend C++, hopefully. So what is C++? C++ was developed as an extension of C by Björn Stroustrup. And he's still actively developing this language. It adds many useful features and it has object-oriented capabilities built in. C++ is much more complicated than C. So if you look at a standard book for C++, you're looking at 1000 pages. When you compare it to the standard of C, it has about 200 pages. So that's huge difference and that's one of the reasons why we introduce C++ later than C. For most cases, C++ is a superset of C. That means that you can use basically all the language constructs provided from C in a C++ code. That means you can compile your C code as a C++ code, in fact, in most cases, if with minor changes. Now, there are very few exceptions to this statement. So also there have been features of C++ that were fed back into C and of course, new features emerged into the C standard, right? C99, C17, and so forth. So the same for C++. So let's have a look at the first C++ program, which is a Hello World program. So we see here our typical include from C. We see our main function here without full signature. So no arguments given, that's valid. But then we see here some changes. We see here std, we see two columns, c out, whatever that means. Then we see these two um, brackets over here, left brackets and two brackets over here. So other than that, so that's the part for input and output. Yeah, we see an addition, semicolons at the end, quite normal. And then output again, oh, which has again those brackets. So we will analyze now this program in detail and discuss these differences that you see in the following. So first, what we see a lot is so-called streams. This is a concept for input and output that we know from the C standard library as well. But here it is so tightly embedded that you get new operators. In particular, you get this um, two left shift operators here and the right shift operator over here. Um, and what they are doing is basically they move data into the respective stream. So if you have this left shift operator, you move data to the left. If you do it to the right, you move data from the stream to the right somewhere. So let's have a look what it means. We have here something called C out which stands for our standard out channel. And we move in to this channel some data, particularly this data over here. Enter first integer, backslash n. So that means this text over here gets pretty much printed on the standard out channel. So this is equivalent to a printf enter first integer. And when we move it to the right, we can read data. So this is what we find here, C in, that's the standard input channel. We move in some data from here into the variable A. So we try to read an integer 
from the input channel. So we can cascade those operations. We can have that means we can have multiple of those operations on the operators in a single statement. So like C out, hello. We have with the left shift operator here, left shift operator again there, left shift operator end line, which stands for backslash n. Very nice is as well the streams can handle theoretically at least any data type that you can feed into it. So that means reading a double variable is the same syntactically as reading an integer. So that's pretty nice. So you don't have to use any kind of format specifier like for printf when we had person %d, person %s, what have you. That's all not needed. We will detect the type here when we do such an operation. Like here we figure out it's an integer and then we will call the write function. So that also means we don't need a reference operator when we read data like we needed for scan f. So we really read data here from our standard input into the variable a and it's not needed that we provide the memory address here.